Man, what is Jeff Wilson doing lately with his trades? I do not understand it. Today we are going to go over some of the recent videos that he's made. Actually, we're going to focus in on one. This might actually be a multi-part series because all the stuff with Roth cards, that might have to be a whole separate video. Guys, if you are new here and you're looking for just about daily sports card collectible style content, friends, you have come to the right place. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. We are slowly crawling to 20,000 subscribers about 550 to go, but who's counting? Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you do like what you hear. Also, connect with me on IG at Sports Card Dad. Huge thanks to today's video sponsor, ComC.com, your home for buying, selling, and flipping all the hottest trading cards. Their consignment marketplace now home to over 32 million cards from baseball's biggest stars like Shohei Otani, Aaron Judge, and Mookie Betts to Marvel favorites like Spider-Man, Thor, and Captain America. ComC has something for every type of collector, so make sure to visit ComC.com today to build out your collection with your favorite cards. Guys, check out the link below in the video description, as well as the ComC link pinned in the comments. All right, so my buddy lately, Jeff Wilson, has been making self-admittedly risky trades, and man, he is not kidding. We're going to zero in on one, and like I said, we'll probably have two, maybe three videos on this coming up over the next 10 days. But he's actually doing the opposite of what I thought he was going to do after watching his series with Marshall Fogle. So if you know about Marshall Fogle, he is the guy that's got one of the Mickey Mantle PSA 10s. Jeff visited him and, and talked about his collection, did a whole series, highly produced, really great series on Marshall Fogle. And Fogle, I think, said that he has more signed bats than the Baseball Hall of Fame. This guy has the the point zero 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 one percent of baseball card collections it's unbelievable he's got sports memorabilia he's got cards but one thing that he always touched on was kind of always be trading up and getting into stuff that is more rare and scarce for the goats for the important players and, and like i said he's been focused around baseball so he's got the babe ruth stuff he's got the mantle stuff the ty cobb etc but the trades i've been watching jeff do here over the last little bit over the last few weeks have really been focused on he's got the bigger card and he is divesting down into other really risky stuff. He's famous now for the Desmond Ritter Black Disco one of one. I think he's also got the the Black Finite one of one. So he's like double triple down on Desmond Ritter. And hey, the Falcons are two and zero. They've come out they've come out hot. Not necessarily because Desmond Ritter is lighting the world on fire, but here here they are. The Falcons are two and zero. And so I'm curious to see kind of what Jeff does with his Ritter stuff, if he's going to ride it out and see what the Falcons do, if Ritter maybe kind of gets better because they're really winning with the run game, they're winning with some good defense. And not that Ritter is playing terribly, but he's certainly not lighting the world on fire, really the same way that like a Jordan Love is for the Packers. Jordan Love has got, what, three touchdown passes in his first two games. He's He's been really good. And so here you go. We'll get into the trade. So the same guy that traded him the National Treasures patch auto that I thought was fantastic um, it was it was a six figure deal. This is going back what a couple of months now. Jeff at the National moved out of that uh, National Treasure Steph Curry autograph card, one of Steph Curry's best all all around cards, but got into another really good card in the gold Steph Curry BGS nine a copy in, in a BGS nine greatest number to fifty. It's a great card. For Steph Curry, his top top cards are pretty well defined, and I'm one of those believers. I'm a Curry believer. I think he's a guy that changed basketball. He's changed how perimeter players defend. He's changed the way the game of basketball is played, in my opinion, the way that now centers are three-point shooters. Steph Curry and the Splash Brothers really kind of reined in and brought in this whole notion of, hey, you know what? If we can make enough threes, if our percentage is high enough, and hell, some of them might be from half court, we can win games. And they've won championships that way. And they're the first team to really do it. And now we have seen really positionless basketball take hold to where we've got Jokic shooting threes. You got all the big men shoot threes. The years of the Patrick Ewings and the you know the Tim Duncans of the world, the power the power players down low have really given way to more finesse big men. You know, and that's really what the league is now. Steph Curry to me is going to be one of those guys remembered and also beloved in California. He's a guy that may be a little bit boring to some. He doesn't have kind of the big personality. But he's just one of those cool customers, and I think that over time, he is, his, the respect for Curry is only going to rise. And, and like I said, he's got a huge fan base out there in the Golden State. So 
he moved into a gold. And of course, the guy that traded him, the National Treasures, I think his name is Dave or David, Mike, Dave, whatever. So came back around and said, hey, I'm interested in that Curry Gold and kind of laid out a bunch of different cards on the table. So the ones that they really narrowed it down to were a Joe Burrow Midnight National Treasures numbered one out of five autograph sealed, so not graded. Josh Allen Optic Gold numbered to 10 PSA 9. 52 Tops Mantle SGC 3, and it was nicely centered left to right, top to bottom, not as much, and kind of, you know, a little bit of the rounded corners thing. But honestly, that would be a perfect, for me, that would be the best card the rounded corners mean it didn't get trimmed, and the centering is really nice left to right. And then top to bottom, yeah, I mean, okay, it's not perfect, but whatever. It's a three. I think that would be kind of, for me personally, if I was going to try to get that, that would be exactly the zone I would want to be in for a 52 tops mantle card. And then also a Shaq USA Dream Team patch auto, cool card. Um, that there was kind of a throw in as part of this deal. And so what they landed on with this deal is all of those cards plus $17,000 of cash for that Curry Gold and the BGS9 number 250. Now, the only thing I can think of when Jeff makes the deal to get out of the Curry cards is, is that he can get back into these cards later and maybe at a lesser price. Maybe the thought with Steph Curry is he's still got a couple more years, kind of the twilight of his career. And maybe, you know, he slows down, he doesn't play as well, and, and maybe his cards take a little bit of a hit. So this is an opportunity to where, hey, I got into these cards, I was excited about them, but now I'm thinking, ah, could I get back into these cards? The only problem with this, though, is, is the assumption is you can kind of easily get back into these cards, but it might not be the case. You know, if people are socking those away, the gold is numbered to 50, so there's, there's only 50 copies, only so many graded copies, only so many people that want to sell theirs. Because a lot of people, that's a card that they will put away. That'll be a card that they are not interested in trading. They will sock it away and let it sit there for 20 or 30 years. It'll be one of those kind of a, a 52 tops mantle type situation for the modern collector. They just sock that thing away. They're not interested in moving it. The one card he did get out of the trade, the 52 tops mantle, fantastic card. Hard to really argue against that one, except that not like it's extremely rare, um, but at the same time, it is the most iconic card in the hobby. Getting that card in the trade just kind of that that's the one that made the most sense to me and still has, I think, you know, upward trajectory. The Josh Allen and Joe Burrow cards, man, I mean, they both have started out a little cold. And watching Joe Burrow play, he's he's my fantasy quarterback, and watching him play the first couple of days, I don't know. He got paid, and I don't know what happened. It's not that he's, you know, just given up on football, but Joe Cool, the guy was just laser focused all the time. It just hasn't been there the first couple of games. Not seeing a sense of urgency, not seeing him ready. And I get that, you know, he's semi-injured. He's still trying to get through. He didn't really pay, play in the preseason, so trying to get up to speed. But hopefully see some out of, out of Joe Burrow. But that was a big part of the trade. I think that was twenty, twenty-five, twenty-eight thousand dollars $28,000 of the trade is that one Joe Burrow card. And it's a great card. It's one out of five, autograph, you know, all the rest of it. But Joe Burrow does have quite a few autograph rookie cards. He does have patch cards. He's got just a lot of rookie cards in general. You think Tom Brady has a lot of rookie cards. Take a look at Joe Burrow and Josh Allen has a lot too. The Josh Allen Optic Gold was is down half from, you know, going back six months because he kind of flopped in the playoffs. So at this at this stage, picking it up at, I think, 8000 seven, 8000 on the valuation, it's still a lot of money. But the Optic Gold number to 10, it is an important Panini product. It is one of his better cards and aesthetically great looking card for Josh Allen. So again, I was surprised that he did move out of kind of these, these big cards that, that you put away unless he has the idea that he's going to get into a better copy of that gold later. Like maybe he's going to pay a premium. Maybe Curry, like we talked about, is, you know, it kind of cools off over the last few years of his career, kind of in the same fashion that I think Tom Brady's will over the next few years. He just retired. People kind of forget for a little while, like how good these guys were. And then the appreciation comes down the road. So maybe his thought is, hey, look, I'm going to get another gold, but I'm going to get a BGS 9.5 or I'm going to get a 10 or I'm going to get a whatever and I'll pay. And at that point, the prices maybe have come down a little bit more. They've receded a little bit to where I can get into that card again. That's the only thing that makes sense because I know that he really likes Curry. And so it's probably a matter of getting back into those cards at a later date because both of those cards are really awesome. All right, guys, chime in in the comments below. Good trade, bad trade. Did both sides win? Did both sides lose? Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.